Today's video is a Q&A. We have gathered all the questions from you on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please go ahead and follow me. I do on average one Q&A every month. So that's where I would post it on my stories. And that's where you can post your questions. We are going to get started with our first question by Ordinary. Is the Hermes Kelly belt comfortable? Do you have to constantly adjust it to keep it in the correct size? Good question. So I resisted buying the Kelly belt for a long time, but I finally did cave and I did buy it. Although I did buy the Kelly pocket belt. They're essentially the same thing, but you get an extra little pocket, which is the card holder portion. So if you haven't seen that, go watch my last video where I unboxed um, all my Hermes goodies and my Farfetch haul. Everything is styled in the video, so make sure you don't skip because otherwise you will just miss out on all the info that I give you. When I bought this belt, I had to try on three or even four different ones because they all were sort of a bit defective. I don't know if it ever happened to you guys, but literally as you know, you have, you see how this one, I only need to like still kind of use pressure, but only it was actually the manager that was helping me. And she was like clicking, clicking, clicking. It would take a little while. Like you would literally have to use quite a bit of force to get it in. And anyway, I thought they were defective. The cutout doesn't seem like it was cut uh, wide enough or, you know, just kind of big enough. So anyway, this was the best of all four. We even took out a regular Kelly belt to try. And yeah, it was just very strange. So do keep that in mind if you buy a Kelly belt whether it's easy to close. Anyway, she was going to send those back for repair, which is very strange. It did remove all the stickers and it does get scratched right away because this part here, these two little nubs here, does scratch the hardware right there. As for your question, so I'm going to try it on with you here on my rib cage so that you can see it. Um, you do have to adjust it if you do wear all kinds of rises of pants and depending on what you plan to use it on. Although adjusting it, it's not so hard, but it is sort of that annoying step. So if that annoys you, then maybe the Kelly belt or this kind of adjustable belt is not for you. What I tend to notice is that uh, a lot of my current pants, which I've upgraded which I've kind of did a revamp of my closet. Um, it was gradual, but you know, lately I've been more into the higher rise pants. So once I adjust it once, more or less, it's going to be about the same width. It's just that some pants may be thicker than others. And so you just might have to, while you have it on, you just have to kind of pull it on one side and then adjust it on the other. So it's not so bad of an adjustment. Um, and most of the time, because I tend to wear my pants a little loose anyway, like even though I have it in the proper high-waisted setting, um, I don't mind if it's like a little looser or a little, like it just depends on what I'm trying to achieve that day in terms of the look. So yeah, unless you're trying to use it for a high-waist pant one day and then a low rise pant the other day, then yes, your adjustment will be more drastic. So yeah, it really depends on the shape of your body too, because remember I am more of a straighter shape body type. So even if I had to adjust to a lower rise, it's not going to be that big of a difference. Okay, the next question is by Fashion Cabin. Do you own any designer makeup bags? So hi, babe. Um, Fashion Cabin also is a YouTuber and she's super cute check out her channel. Um, so to answer your question, I don't own any designer, if you mean high-end designers such as Chanel, LV, Gucci, that type of thing uh, of makeup bags because even with makeup alone, I am so minimal. I always wear the same things and I finish all my products before I buy new ones. So I am really, really minimal when it comes to makeup. So I 
I don't own any designer ones, but I will show you what I own and what I use. And they are so great. These are amazing little pouches that I've been using forever. This one is my favorite one. This one is by Le Sport Sac. Le Sport Sac in English. Um, it's, it's really great. It has really um, a large compartment here in the middle and then a slimmer compartment on the side here so it's really dirty right now but i use this one as my main uh travel makeup bag as well as when i just open it up and leave it on the counter when i'm at home so this side i would put all my little tools such as tweezers and nail clippers and then on this side is everything else all the all the makeup stuff and i normally only bring like a couple brushes with me and i would just wrap it in a tissue paper and shove it on this side from the same brand this one is so cute and it's um padded and it's quilted i'm so sad that uh the store where i used to shop for this in seattle at the outlet they closed it and that's where i get all my le sport sac items uh, but in any case i was just using this on my road trip and I will be using this again on my vacation and yeah this one is amazing for all the bulkier products such as your lotions your creams I was just thinking that I don't have anything more higher end but I actually do I have this one which is from Longchamp as you can see my tags are still on I haven't even used it yet but um i do own this one and i just never had to use it because i just enjoy these two so much but i do own this one and this is an older style makeup bag and it's um really spacious and i love this style more because it doesn't have that middle leather flap which gets in the way of you zipping and unzipping so i should i should actually use this one because it's nice next question is by chris tan what are your hits and misses in fine jewelries? Definitely a huge hit is this bracelet here. This is the love bracelet in the thin 15 centimeter size and this is in rose gold. Um, it's funny because when I did my review, my one year plus, it's like one and a half year review of this bracelet, there was some comments it was, it was actually just a question from a subby and then someone commented on that person. Basically, that second person is saying like, it's impossible that you get such small wrists because, you know, like how tall are you? Like she was really, he or she was really, really uh, curious and almost like aggressive, um, but maybe not, maybe just really curious. And I was reading it and I was like, oh my gosh, that subby that asked the original question, she was just saying how if you have a wrist that is smaller than uh, 12, um, 0.5 or even 12 centimeters, is it suitable to get the size bracelet? And I was telling her that, well, you've got to try it because everyone's bone structures is different. And the thing is, I have a 12.5 centimeter wrist on my left arm and this bracelet is not as suitable on this arm because every time I turn it would sort of like not completely rotate but it's just that it would get stuck in um, so you see how like this bracelet is you know the the oval the long side is here but instead when I twist my arm it would get twist it would get stuck on this side, but like here on the longer side of the arm, if that makes sense to you. Maybe it doesn't because a lot of you don't have this problem. But um, so so in that case, I don't like to wear this bracelet on this side. Anyway, all that to say that this is definitely a hit for sure, but only um, I could only wear on my dominant arm, which is the bigger arm. Um, all the rings that I'm wearing right now on my dominant hand, the Kelly ring and the Coco Crush small ring also are huge hits. Um, all the jewelry on my neck, literally this is my stack now, permanently on my neck, um, are definite hits. So I have two necklaces, diamond necklaces from Ideal. And this one is the rose gold pendant pendant from Hermes. This stack is permanent on my 
on my neck even though sometimes you do see me wear my costume jewelry it's usually hidden like below my shirt and I wear the costume jewelry on top I literally never remove this even when I shower and everything they stay on my neck all the time in terms of earrings I love these ones by ideal uh, but I do remove my earrings I cannot sleep with my earrings on um, I think for me the best purchases that I ever make for myself are always gonna be rings and necklaces however I always wear the same things so with rings I can change it up more often but I don't really because once I find favorites I just keep wearing them and I'm committed to them this bracelet also stays on me 24 7 I never remove it again I would just link to my original uh, review video for you guys the other two pieces that I wanted to talk about are these two these are not misses per se definitely they are not misses but I did buy these two before all these other rings and so I don't wear them as often and the reason for this ring so this is the thin Juste and Clou ring I bought it as an index ring for my dominant hand and my dominant hand tends to have more arthritis than my non-dominant hand so when I bought this I was sort of getting a mini flare up or I was experiencing a mini flare up so even that day my joints were quite a bit more swollen than say today so the ring is still my size but only on days that I don't feel as well so I don't technically regret this ring it's just that I don't I can't always wear it which is a good sign I guess for me um, for my health when I'm doing better then I can wear my smaller size ring so this is the ring that I've been wearing lately I didn't have to change to that one but again as you all know autoimmune diseases are there's always ups and downs so you can't really predict when you're gonna have ups when you're gonna have downs and you're just hoping that by managing it well that you have more ups than downs right uh, and then this ring I bought it uh, before all my other Hermes jewelries this was my very first Hermes jewelry and I still really like it but I have to say that I favor the Kelly ring for sure the Kelly ring is just so beautiful it's dainty and it has I don't know it's so simple really the, the design is so simple but even though there's only four little diamonds it just feels it just looks more dainty and more my style like a little bit more elegant and classic even though there's nothing wrong with the um, CDC ring but you guys know what I mean like I just have been favoring the Kelly ever since I got the Kelly ring and hence you know I've become quite a big fan of the Kelly lock itself I am eyeing another bracelet and I am contemplating either an Hermes one which you know I would buy that one because I do like it um, but it is more for their pre-spend uh, I guess the other brand that I'm really really eyeing is the Tiffany I'm really eyeing the Tiffany lock and I'm just a bit worried that it may not fit me because uh, again the same problem with just your bone structure it may or may not work out and so I have to try it the next question is by Lizzie C did you study in Quebec yes so for those of you who don't know where Quebec is Canada has 10 provinces and two uh, territories and Quebec is the largest province in Canada oh my gosh I forgot my geography already I think it is the largest one anyway that's where Montreal is and that's where I was born and raised and studied yes I only moved to BC to Vancouver 12 years ago I'm gonna put my hair up because I am getting a little warm in any case um, yes I did study in Quebec and uh, that is also why I speak fluent French or at least I spoke fluent French I am still fluent uh, but I'm very rusty now the next question by mini footprints which of your bags do you carry to work I always said that I don't recommend luxury bags as work bags my reasoning is pretty simple I just don't want to add that kind of wear and tear to my luxury bags and plus all my bags are really more on the smaller size it wouldn't fit my computer anyway so um, I 
have always just, you know, if I had to bring a nice sort of my own tote with my personal items and belongings and still be able to just bring extra stuff, I've always just recommended Longchamp, which is like, this is not only a great work bag, but it's also sort of that travel bag too. So this is my favorite uh, and for a long time, my only Longchamp bag. This one is really nice. It has that waterproofed um, nylon because it's got that coating. Recently, I just bought this one. So this is their more simple recycled nylon. This is their green line. And this is the medium size with the short top handle because I like a top handle now nowadays more because it looks a little bit more, um, I don't know, dressy, even though it's really a casual tote, but it's such a great size. It's essentially the same size i mean there's maybe just very slightly different but they're essentially almost the same size and these are just great size totes um that you know they will get wear and hair because if you're really using them but they are just workhorses for the amount of money that you invest in them is really minimal compared to thousands of dollars a bit more proper so if you have to see clients is this murda ray bag it has two different straps and they're made of leather full grain leather and then um the closure is quite easy it's a magnetic closure but it has a hook as well it's quite spacious but this bag is not gonna fit your laptop as readily it will still fit a modern laptop but it's just um, probably better for if you only need to carry it once in a while not all the time because it's really meant as still an everyday bag but with more capacity the question is did media did social media I think that's what we mean a current fascination with Hermes enhance your interest with the brand um yeah I think it's normal for social media to persuade you to over time sort of like it more and more i think that is totally normal and so for me the answer is yes definitely um because i would be lying if i said no there was definitely no influence before i was really into ahmed's i definitely didn't mind it but i was not really into it because I think the main concern I had at the time was that, you know, in my mind, I was just thinking, oh, everything at Hermes must be really, really pricey and expensive. And I just don't even want to go there. Whereas now that I am into Hermes and I am buying Hermes often, I see the subtle differences and the nuances. Again, you kind of just have to know your brand to know what to buy and what you will like to buy even because not everything I will be interested. Price alone is just one factor. There's also the aesthetic, which, you know, with Hermes, I wasn't into the aesthetic as much. There's really no other way to say it. I'm just getting older and my um, my aesthetic and even my my preference is more simple nowadays. So I feel like yeah, to answer your question, social media definitely has something to do with it. But I also am sort of like opening to it as I age as well. And I am liking what I get. The next question is by Wally R17. Did you express your next wish list bag at Hermes? If so, what it is? Oh, yes. I speak about it all the time in, in my various videos, but you may have skipped it or something. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious. I made it really clear in several of my videos that my next Hermes bag that I would love to get is the Kelly. And specifically, I would love a Kelly Mini. So I know that's really, really hard to get. And I get the same sort of replies from anyone that I speak to is that oh, you will have to wait either a very long time or the pre-spend is like, I don't know, five to one um, or at least three to one. I think that is sort of like, you know, there's no set rules. I, actually, there is no set rule. You might just get lucky with an essay. They like you and 
they have it, they just offered it to you. I would also be very, very open to a, a Kelly 25 because the Kelly 25 is just as gorgeous. I would like it in Cellier, of course. Um, yeah, the Kelly 25 is a great size. It's a little different from the Mini, of course. And a lot of people will maybe even think that the Mini is not worth it because it doesn't come with certain accessories and it's really small, can hardly even fit a phone. I agree with all of that, but I still want it first if I can. Um, but it's not up to me to decide. I'll see what gets offered to me. And yeah, they definitely know my wish list. They definitely do. Would you consider non-quota bags in exotic like the Mini Huli or the Mini Bolid, for example? Ah, good question. Um, uh, and I think because I said, again, in one of my videos, I said that uh, I'm not even into an exotic bag. Just give me the simple Kelly. I just want it in Epsom or Chev and I'm happy. Um, I will consider an exotic bag if I like it. Like, for example, uh, it didn't matter if it's a quota or non-quota. If the moment I see it, I'm like, woo, I, like, it just makes me, um, you know, have no words because I like it so much. I would just get it, whether it's a non-quota or quota. But I will say that for a quota bag, if I was even offered a, an exotic quota bag, which honestly they wouldn't because, you know, I'm, I'm not that kind of clientele. I'm not at that kind of spend. So probably they wouldn't offer it to me. But let's just say they do offer it to me, right? Maybe that's just the only stock they have and they just want to like give it to me. Then um, I will take it if I like it. I'm, I'm serious, guys. But I will be a bit more reluctant to use that exotic bag if it was like a regular size quota bag. If it was a mini, I'm totally okay with it. So same with the mini huli and the mini bolid. I think if I like it when I see it and I can envision myself not being too scared of wearing it, I will definitely take it. But then I will also know that I'm more limited to the amount of times I can carry it. That's the beauty of more simple bags. I know this is not Hermes, but my point is like more simple bags like these. And I just bought these two, by the way, you guys, um, if you've seen my previous video, I did a Farfetch haul and I finally received the other two totes that um, I bought because the one that I wanted originally was sold out. So I ended up buying this for my mom. Super cute. Very similar to mine. Mine just has the red trim. And I bought an additional one for myself, a slightly larger size. So now I have a whole collection. I digress. My point is simpler bags, which is my preference at, at the moment, I get more use out of it. So I would rather get an Epsom Kelly and just be like literally wearing t-shirts and wear my Kelly. Um, if I get an exotic, I will still wear it. On some days, I might still wear it with my t-shirts, but I just feel like I need to dress up a bit more for my exotic bags. You know what I mean? So um, that's where I'm at. Who is Spandora360? What is your top three most used bags? It really changes all the time, depending on the season and where I'm going and all that stuff. But at the moment, and I didn't even realize that, at the moment, it seems like it's just very, very Hermes centric. <laughs> this is my most used bag at the moment. It's my Birkin 25. This is literally the perfect Birkin for me because it's it's the perfect size. Um, it's not so heavy that I'm like, oh, my arm's dying. Obviously, it does get heavy if you do carry it for several days in a row, which I did in Seattle. At the end of the trip, I was like, okay, I need to put this back down. But uh, even with that, I'm still head over heels for this brick in 25. And I will get another one for sure. Again, that's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take a minute, especially in Vancouver. But, um, you know, if I travel, I will try for when. Oh, let's hope. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm really really hoping that I can just anyway we're digressing so this is definitely um more recently my favorite uh and my most worn I would love to get another color of the Birkin 25 uh, just something lighter because black is amazing but 
I need light colors now, especially, um, you know, as we move into fall, this is still great. But like as we get into spring and summer again, I would love, 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 love to get a lighter color of this. Like a mushroom or beton or even gold. Amazing. Um, and then I couldn't decide between these two, but I actually think that I wear this one uh, quite a bit. This is my Della Cavalleria cross body bag. And I think one of the reasons why I have been enjoying this a lot is because it's ease of use. Literally every time I'm like, oh, I don't know which bag to use, but I want something a bit spacious and not hard to organize. Literally, this guy is so good. This, this bag is so good because it's quite tall. So all my SLGs, including my phone, stands up in this bag. So it's super easy. I literally like throw, throw, throw things in there and then I close it and I out the door so uh, I've been loving this one and mainly also because of the color because again I said I have a lot of black bags now and I'm just finding myself kind of needing that pop of color again in my collection and it doesn't even have to be like a super pop color it just has to be a lighter shade so any neutrals uh, you know that I can incorporate more into my collection that's what I'm needing now because yeah a lot of my bags are black and so the third one that I selected is this one this is my Picotin in 18 and this is um the one that I have in touch and it's just so wonderful I I think this is definitely one of my best LMS purchases Steph Louis your thoughts on stacking two love bracelets together oh um I like it I like the idea it works on some people more than others I don't know if it'll work as well on me because again my bone structure and just you know I like if I did stack two of these it will you know it will just sort of sit one here and one here I suppose and it will look nice um I think for me I might go with a different color gold so I might go with a yellow gold or a white gold um, but I don't know. I feel like it doesn't add so much to me personally just because of my my structure of bones and just like, you know, my wrists, I've always never been able to to decorate them. <laughs> and now that I'm older, my bones are supposed to be slightly thicker and more muscular um, because when I was a teenager, I was literally a twig. I just, you know, have nothing on my arms. Um, now that I actually have more midi arms and yet they're still very, very small. I don't know if stacking for me makes that big of a difference. Again, I will try to find out because like I said, I am eyeing for, or I am I am hoping to get another bracelet because why not? Like I, I, I love the idea, but if, only if it looks good on me. I feel like it just depends on whether that looks good on you because not everyone needs to stack bracelets to look good because for me, that's why for the longest time I've only just got this one and I've only just still thought that this one is more than sufficient for me but I am at a point where I want to start adding another one so I will I will look around I will shop around and that would be a good um, thing to do on my vacation to just go to different stores and try them on without having to feel like I need to commit because I'm only there temporarily and they know that when you're a tourist you would just <laughs> go and try things out and you don't have to commit right away. So that's a good way to try many different brands and uh, things that you normally would not and see how that works out. Vivi Star, where is your dream travel destination and why? Before when I was younger, I was so adventurous. Now I just want very, very calm vacations with a bit of shopping involved so I definitely love trips where you get to drive around go to different places to eat and have a lot of nature to look at but not necessarily have to hike it um, you know doing a little bit of easy hiking not the not the crazy not the crazy hua shan type of hiking right not like that um, <laughs> like the easy hikes um, and also shopping and I want to do more European trips because there's so much of Europe that I haven't seen the first time I went to Europe the first and last time I went to Europe was a while ago <laughs> places where you can still do a lot of like 
city stuff, but also a bit of the nature stuff and just be able to get around comfortably. Usually tropical is nice too, so yeah. Those are my dream destinations. I know I'm not helping, right? It's not just one. I, I, I would go anywhere, honestly. Anywhere that has a bit of both. Miles in Sid, please share any lessons learned from your age journey so far. The biggest lesson learned from me is that I'm glad that I was mentally prepared and also financially prepared. Mentally prepared is also probably more important even because um, your age journey is very unpredictable. It can be very, very pleasant, no drama, you get your bag very quickly, that sort of thing. Or it could be the opposite, where there's quite a bit of roller coaster. I had a bit of cold roller coaster. Another lesson learned, which I've said since the beginning, is that honestly, guys, buy what you love and uh, use. Certain things I definitely use more than others, and um, sometimes I even reflect on things that I don't even use at all, uh, even though I love it. So there is that fine line where you might think that you love it but then you end up buying it and you don't really use it so that's also kind of a wasted opportunity because that money can could have gone towards something else that you like more um, but in any case don't ever feel pressure to buy something that you don't absolutely love and that you absolutely have no use for because worst thing is that you have no use for but just because your essay told you that oh that would be nice on you or that they're really trying to maybe like subconsciously tell you that you need to spend more basically hence they're showing you all these different things still don't buy it just because of that spend less on like little things like this if you're not going to wear it i love this by the way i'm not saying this is a bad purchase but you know you could be swayed by buying like bastias and twillies and all those things but are you really going to use all those things right if you're not pull all of that money together and buy that nice sweater that you will actually wear quite a bit more. I don't ever want to feel like I was forced to do anything, whether it's the spending or the way of thinking, um, whether I get persuaded even by the comments, there's a lot of suggestions <laughs> and feedback sometimes that I'm like, okay, well, that's what you think, but that's none of my business. Like I may or may, I may or may not apply what the suggestions that were given to me and that's my choice at the end of the day you have to know and decide what's best for you right um yeah and don't spend too fast i think at the end of the day there are trips where you will buy a lot more because you just ended up liking a lot of stuff and maybe there's just a lot of new stock coming in so you might end up doing a big spend on one trip and other trips, you might just buy a couple of things, two scarves. Um, like, it doesn't have to be always spending a ton of money. Just, again, just go with the flow, right? At the end of the day, it just goes with the flow. Um, that's what's been working for me, and that's what's been keeping me sort of more or less sane, even though, like I said, it's still been a roller coaster ride, but. Um, it's also because of the long wait and just some of the things that happened. It does suck when you are in a in a city where you know the store is very, very, very highly competitive and um, stock is very, very low and the offers are very far in between. And um, yeah, that really sucks. So get ready for that, I will say. And if you're not in that category of uh, issues then good for you good on you um but yeah those are all the questions thank you so much i've talked for so long i probably have a lot of editing and um yeah hope you enjoyed it have a great week ahead of you and i'll talk to you guys next time bye